Good morning, Journey Church. Would you stand with me this morning? Are you glad to be here today? Come on, are you glad to be in church today? This is his house, and we praise him this morning. So everything you have, let's give it to Jesus today. Come on. We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds a victory. church let's keep it going this morning we are grateful for jesus today amen are you grateful for jesus in your life come on let's sing about it today
When I was down, when I was down, you brought me out. You set my feet on higher ground. Here I stand, so here I stand. You are my God, yes, you are. Your faithfulness, my solid rock. church all across this place as we lift our hands and as we lift our hands the heavens open heavens open so let our lives declare the love of God has spoken over us and as we lift our hands the as we come into your presence today, God. You are welcome here today. We are so thankful and grateful, God, that we could come into this place and worship you. Your faithfulness, your gratefulness today. We love you and we thank you, God, and we give you all the praise today. Hallelujah. When I felt like the burden was more than I could hold.
face. There's one common and one constant in our life, and that's Jesus. He's faithful. It says, why should our heart be afraid? Why should we be afraid if we have the hope and the faith in Jesus? So as we sing these next few words, oh God, my Father, how great is your faithfulness. Let it ring out today. Come on. Oh God, Let it ring. My Father, Let you sing out the words that Jesus, he is grateful, he is faithful to your life today. Come on, let us sing. he's that powerful come on if you're continuing to go through something in your life today hold on to the hope of Jesus and know that he is always there for you and will always be there for you today as we sing this last song I want to encourage you to open up your hearts today open up your minds let God use you like he's never used you before storm surrounding me let it break at your name still call the sea to still the rage in me to steal every way at your name Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus silence fear Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus we call these bones to live call these lungs to sing once again I will pray
the shadows can't deny. I'm telling you right now, church, there's some of you in this place. I said this in the first service. If you have not realized yet, you're not perfect. Okay? You're not perfect. Tell your neighbor, say, hey, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. But you know who is? Jesus. Jesus, you're going to go you're, throughout your life, if you haven't seen it already, you're going to face bumps. You're going to face trials. That will not stop. That will not stop. The scripture said the enemy is here to steal, kill, and destroy your life. That's what he wants to do. But Jesus says, I come to bring life more abundantly and give you life. You live for me. So that's interpreting that song that he makes the darkness tremble. He makes the devil shake when he speaks if we listen. So when you're going through something in your life that the devil is tearing you down because that's his job, if you call on Jesus, if you say the word Jesus, if you get in the book and read his, read his word that is truth, guess what? The devil starts shaking because he knows something's up. And guess what? The devil's going to lose if you continue to dig and you continue to go after Because it will not be overcome. 
because he's alive. We are so glad you chose to worship with us today and be with us here today in our second service. It's a great crowd here at 1030. We thank you for joining us. If you're a guest today in this place, uh, just take a couple of seconds here in a moment. There's a QR code in the seat back in front of you. Scan that QR code with your phone. It'll prompt you to a uh, guest fill out form and it will send it directly to our guest service volunteers and they will have a gift with your name on it waiting for you right after service is over. And so it's just our way of saying thank you for being here today and thank you for choosing Journey Church to worship uh, this morning. Pastor Steve is going to conclude his sermon series on more, not move. I said move in the first service. That was embarrassing. Uh, but it's more, okay? Just remove the V, add the R, okay? More, all right? He's going to conclude it. Uh, it's a great word. Uh, we're looking forward to that. If you have your Bibles, get ready to get those out. If you don't have your Bibles, you can use your phone and your smartphone and get the Bible app out. Click on the word event, find events, find Journey Church NWA, and you can follow along on the notes right there with it. We are so glad you chose to be with us. The special thing we do each and every week is if you hadn't had a chance to meet somebody yet today or this week and seen them in a while maybe and they're here today, you can do that right now. So take 30 seconds, greet and meet somebody. Tell them you're glad they're here today. You can have a seat. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, I'm sure glad you're sitting beside me today. Awesome. It's good to have all of you here this morning. Thanks for joining us for our 1030 service for sure. All right. So before we jump into the word, I some of these are still around your seats there. And I know that uh, 2022, we've got a lot of things that we like. I want to do this this year. I, I want to accomplish this this year. I think for me, one of the biggest things that I want to encourage you as your pastor is to get into God's word. Now, you may already have a set thing that you do with your discipleship time, your devo time. But if you don't, man, this right here is called soap. It's something you can apply. Maybe you could add on to what you're already doing. And I know, oh, Pastor, if it's already three weeks into to the new year, it's okay. You can play catch up. We all get behind sometimes, uh, but you can just jump right in there and get into God's word, and it gives you great direction, you know, what the soap stand for, scripture, observation, application, and prayer. We're going to read the scripture. We're going to observe what it says. We're going to apply it to our lives. Then we're going to pray over it, and we're going to spend time in, in, in God's presence, and we're just going to pray. 
So I highly want to encourage you, if you haven't grabbed one of these and you're looking for something to use this year, this is something we want to give you. Every quarter we'll have a new one out, give you more other scriptures of the Word of God to be able to read. So we'll be looking for those for sure. But I just kind of want to mention that this morning again because I always want to encourage you to get into God's Word. We need that. We need, God, we need God's Word in our life for sure. All right, so I'm going to tell on myself just a little bit here uh, as far as uh, the way I grew up as a kid. Some of you may recognize this, some of you may not, but when I grew up as a kid, uh, it was, uh, TV wasn't like it is today, okay? So I can remember, like, if you didn't watch it live, you just missed it. You're not going to be able to, oh, I can just pre-record all this and I can watch it anytime I want to, all right? I remember, like, if you were watching a sporting event and you missed the play, you, you just missed it. Now, they may, finally they had, like, they would, they would show the, the one particular play again, but I can remember those moments. And I, we can, we can kind of fast forward and, and move forward a little bit, but I can also remember, I know me as a kid, school and I, I, I enjoyed school. I didn't love school. It started too early. I'm thinking more like 11 to 2 would be great. But this 8 o'clock in the morning didn't fan very well. So it was like waking the dead for me at my house. My sister was four grades ahead of me, and she was my transportation. And I can remember many moments on, on those, those mornings, like, you have five minutes. I'm going to leave you here, and you're going to miss school, and then you're going to be grounded. And so, because it was throwing a wet rag on my face, you know, pulling the sheets off, and, you know, lights on, whatever. And I'm stumbling out there trying to get outside. But when Saturday came around, at 5.30 in the morning, I am up. Why? Thank you for all you people that understand that. Because all you guys and girls now are like, well, I can watch my favorite show anytime I want. Not as a kid growing up when I grew up, because cartoons only came on on Saturday morning. And it's bright and early. I'm up and I'm ready. I am right in front of the television. And for the next however many hours, I can't believe my parents let me do this, I would watch it. And then we got a little bit older when Mid-South Wrestling came in, then life just changed for me, you know. Because wrestling is real, people. I'm just going to tell you that. Wrestling is real. It's real. But I, there we go. We get the right words there. I, I look at all those things. You move forward. And, and Does anybody ever remember TiVo? Some of you had that like, oh, everything changed in life because now I can record this. I can come back and watch it later. In our lives today, it's no big deal. I can record the whole season and for the next whatever many hours, I can sit on my couch and be a total vegetable, but I get all I want to get at all one moment. Because I don't have to be present when it's live. I can always watch it later. So it kind of goes with what we're talking about today. And we're concluding this sermon series on more, and we're talking about being present in the moment, right here, right now. And I understand, I'm not naive, I, I don't live in a bubble, that you and your brain right now, you're thinking about homework, you're thinking about what I'm going to eat because I'm starving right now, I'm so tired, I should have stayed up so late last night, I wonder if my kids are okay in kids' church. Uh, you're All these things, I've got all this work to do for work tomorrow, and I'm processing. Here's what I'm asking you to do right now. It's my prayer for you today. Be present. Right here, right now. Be present. Not that what I'm going to say, but what the Lord, I believe, through his word is going to say to all of us in this room. It's going to help us understand maybe some tangibles that we can apply to how we can live life based on the word of God. I want to understand this. I, I know I hear people say and I hear ministers say sometimes, it, it seems like when we're preaching it's all about self-help and we just want to make you a better person and all that. I, I, I'm not opposed to those things, but I want it to be based on the word of God. You get me? Because here's the thing, and I want you to realize this. If you don't know this already, the word of God is a self-help book. Right? It is showing us the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus declared that. He is that way. He is that truth. He is that life. So we look at these Bible stories, and we read through the Old Testament, move forward in the New Testament. It is helping us. But it's based on someone who created us. Amen? So it's, it's real. It's real life. It's how to apply when the situation and things take place that we can look into God's word and know this is for me. Because God said it. So our word this year for 2022 is the word more. By definition, it is the greater amount of something. Now I know 
at all of us at some point in time, like, you know, I want to get rid of stuff. And that's good. We're going to talk about that too here in just a few moments. But for right now, I want you to embrace the understanding. There's three things that I believe God pressed on my heart that I want to talk about throughout this year and as we move forward as a church that we need to have more of. More relationships with other people. The very first sermon we preached in 2022 was about asking you. I had people come up here and we created a circle, but it had a gap in it. It had an opening in it. And I asked, I asked the question, is this a circle? And a lot of you said, no. I said, yes, it is. It's the circle that God wants us to have in our lives. It's open. It's always welcoming. It's always uh, uh, moving. And it's always growing. Those things inside our circle is happening. People are coming in. People are going out. We are moving to them. We are growing. We are building relationships. If anything that I desire in our church right now is we grow closer to God. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And we grow closer to other people. Last year, or 2020, when everything kind of hit and we were processing through a lot of junk and we're still having to deal with some of that right now, we talked about isolation being the foundation for defeat. In me to you this morning, Satan wants to isolate you and get you all by yourself and think you have no one around you, no support system, no truth, no life, no direction. And God is saying to you right now, I am that way, I am that truth through Jesus, I am that life. And you can find that community in this church that's why community groups are so important that's why coming together on a Sunday is so important that's why us being together is so important God wants you also the more in your life is more maturity in your faith get off the bottle and let's eat the meat of the Word of God let's grow Quit staying where you've been for 10 years. Move forward. What is God saying to you? How is God is growing us in our lives? That's where he wants us to go. The last thing is this, is leading someone else to Jesus. Statistically, across the nation, if you ask and you did the survey, the percentage of people inside of a church building that have actually led someone to Jesus individually is very low. And my prayer for you is God, through his Holy Spirit, is going to speak to you and you're going to be able to speak life to somebody else. Let me tell you about my story and how God changed me and what he did in my life. Let me tell you what he's done for me and how he can change your life. And I realize when I say that, some of you in this place, your anxiety level just went whoop right up here. You're like, I think I'm going to go to my car now and sit down and we'll talk about this some other time. But God is challenging all of us in this room to be a Christ, a soul winner, leading somebody else to Jesus. So we're talking about being present today. Our big idea, if you're a note taker, would be this. God has more for you. God has more for you in your life today. And we're going to finish up this story of Elijah and Elisha. And we're going to read through it. And maybe you've studied this and you know the story. Great. Just follow along with me. Because I believe there's four things throughout this story. These 18 verses I'm getting ready to read in 2 Kings chapter 2. That can bring some clarity can bring some challenge and some insight to all of us in this room about how we need to be present in following the Lord. You with me? Are you with me? Come on. Let's dive into the Word of God today. 2 Kings 2, verses 1 through 18. <clears throat> what it says, When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal. Elisha or Elijah, sorry, uh, said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, so be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, so be quiet. Now look, I start looking at this story reading and I'm thinking, you know what? I think Elisha's getting a little attitude here. Now, it doesn't have an exclamation mark, or, or it doesn't give a little bit of extra thing. But me thinking, I think Elisha understands what's going to happen. I don't know if these guys are just like, 
jeering and, and poking and, and trying just to poke the bear, so to speak, and see what was going to happen. I don't know if they were really trying to ag him on or make him agitated, but he understood what was getting ready to take place. It was a very real, very present moment for Elisha. Then verse number uh, 6 says this, Then, the, uh, then Elijah said uh, to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to, jo- to the Jordan, the river. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped, uh, had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Pretty cool, right? Real story. Dry ground. Not wet, muddy. Dry ground. And they walked over. When they had crossed, Elijah and Elisha, tell me, uh, uh, tell me uh, what I can do before I, I am taken from you. I want to say that again. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what, I, what can I do for you before I'm taken from you? Very serious question. Getting ready to leave. Never going to be in communication again. Last conversation. Big question. What can I do before you before I depart? This is Elijah's, or Elisha's response. Let me inherit a double portion from your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet, if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and he tore it in two. During that time in that culture, as a sign of, uh, of mourning, a sign of remorse, whatever, they would rip their clothing. And that's what happened. Elisha then picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah? He asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. The company of the prophets from Jericho who were watching said, the spirit of Elijah is resting on Elisha. And they went to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Look, they said, we, your servants, have 50 able men. Let them go and look for your master. Perhaps the spirit of the Lord has picked him, picked him up and sent him from down a, a, on some mountain or, or some other valley. No, Elisha replied, do not send them. But... They persisted until he was too embarrassed to refuse. So he said, send them. And they sent 50 men who searched for three days, but did not find him. When they returned to Elisha, who was staying in Jericho, he said to them, didn't I tell you not to go? And we're talking about being present. Talking about what has happened in this man's life, that in a few moments, everything has changed. Let's pray. God, in this room today, for these next few moments, speak real clarity to our hearts and lives through your word. I pray, God, today that you would allow the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, have your divine way in our hearts and lives this morning. Do what you need to do. I only want to be your messenger today. God, let me speak with clarity and truth in Christ's name. Everyone said amen. Elijah was going to leave for heaven. It was a given. Everybody in this story knew that. It wasn't something that was hidden from everyone that was a part of Elijah's life. He knew, they knew, everyone around knew what was going to happen. It did not need to be repeated to Elisha, yet they did that. They wanted to remind him and remind him three different times. They reminded him the very same thing that he already knew in this story. God was sending Elijah but he also was sending Elisha. God was taking Elijah with him, but God was sending Elisha somewhere else to do what he called him to do. This was a difficult moment for Elisha. How many has ever walked through a difficult moment? Difficult moment. 
And I don't want to, to try to process through all that right now. But I'm just saying to you today that this story understands difficult moments. Understands what things, what happens when someone was here and then they're not here. God understands that. We may not understand it, and I believe in this story, there was some degree uh, in Elisha's life that he said, you know what, I understand it, but I don't really understand it. Why did this have to occur? Process. God's plan. Elisha still had a job to do for God even after Elijah's departure. Me to you today, I want to impress this on your heart. Regardless of what happens in your world and your life and, ch- and change happens and difficulties come and moments of processing has to happen, that doesn't change the fact of God still has you moving forward in a certain process. And we're going to dig into what that means today and what it meant in Elisha's life. You ready? Because here's our question that we have to ask ourselves this morning. If this is the thing, if God is wanting to do things, if God's wanting to give us stuff, then here's our question. How do I receive what God wants to give? Because Elisha understood in this story, look, I know God has called me to continue what Elijah was doing. And that's removing Baal worship out of Israel. Getting false gods, getting all this ungodliness out of Israel to make them the people that God designed for them to be. I understand that. So I know I need what God's wanting to give. How do I receive it? Me to you today, God's been speaking to you in your life. God's been talking to you about specifics. And you're wondering, how do I do what God's asking me to do? I hope through this story today that God's going to give you some understanding of what that looks like. How do I receive what God wants to give? The very first thing we have to look at is don't run to comfort. Don't run to comfort. Look at verse number 2. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, and the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The question could be, why did Elisha not choose to stay in comfort? Because a lot of theologians said, you know what, he could be comfortable. He knew what was going to happen. He didn't have to be there. He didn't have to see it happen. He didn't have to deal with all that hurt or all that loss at that moment. He could have just stayed in Bethel or stayed in Gilgal and not gone to Bethel and everything would have been good. But I think you understand this story because you're smart people. That God and Elijah were testing Elijah in his commitment. When we want to do what God wants us to do, comfort is not the thing we need to run to. Commitment is. Elisha understood his purpose was not going to be fulfilled staying staying comfortable in Gilgal. It would only continue by following his first call. What was his first call? Follow Elijah, right? Because when Elijah threw the cloak over his shoulders, that meant now you're my apprentice. I'm your mentor. You're going to follow me. You're going to do the things. And for six to ten years, that's what Elisha was doing. And in this process of him knowing that Elijah was going to leave, he was still in a waiting pattern. He was still in a holding pattern. It was not where he stepped over where he had to do the things that God told him to do yet. But it was getting ready to happen. He had to be present. To make sure it was going to happen. And Elisha understood that. Write this down. Comfort keeps you from commitment. Comfort keeps you from commitment. Ah, I don't really have to do that. It's okay. Elisha, you know what? God's going to do what God wants to do. I'm just going to go chill out in Gilgal. I got some friends there. We're going to play cards, hang out. It's just going to be good. But he understood, because I love his response, as long as the Lord's living, which God never dies, he's always been, always will be, and as long as you're alive on this planet, Elijah, I'm with you, bro. I'm right here. And I'm not going anywhere. I'm walking with you. Elisha would have forfeited what God wanted to do in him and through him by staying comfortable. In life, we have tendencies to avoid pain. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, because I've been there. Sometimes we want to avoid that. We want to avoid the difficult conversation. We want to uh, 
so we don't want to push through to get the answer. Or maybe uh, the extra effort seems too great, or the fear seems larger than our desire for accomplishment. We all make excuses. We're people. Just like Pastor Lillian said, if we don't understand that, we're not perfect. And that's okay, because we serve a perfect God that understands every detail of what you face and what I face. Elisha was being kingdom-minded, God-kingdom-minded, not Elisha-minded in this moment of his life. In these 18 verses, we begin to see a man who said, I'm not going to run to comfort. I'm not going to run away from responsibility. I'm going to stay committed, and I'm going to run and follow you, Elijah, because I know that's what I'm supposed to do. In order for me to be the man that God wants me to be, I've got to do that. In order for us to be the people that God wants us to be, we've got to run away from comfort and run to commitment. Now, I'm not saying that we can enjoy life, okay? Don't get me wrong that we've got to live in a tent down by the river and just hope Jesus brings a fish by. Okay? Now, if God calls you to do that, high five, hallelujah, go for it. But I'm saying to you today that whatever that commitment level is, that's what we need to run to. I love this verse, Matthew 6, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. You read the rest of that, that verse coming down to verse 33. It's talking about where you're going to sleep, what you're going to eat, and what you're going to wear. In our society today, we can, we're concerned a lot about that. Correct? I don't know about you. I get tired of fashion changing. This is in, now it's not. I'll just keep it because in 10 years it's going to be back. And I'm ready. I'm just planning ahead. You know what I'm saying? It's constant change, constant move. And Jesus is trying to say through these scriptures, if you'll seek me and seek my righteousness, then these things that you feel like you're worried about right now, I'll take care of that for you. Just focus on me. And that's what Elijah was really trying to press. That's what God was trying to press on Elisha's brain and in his life. Focus on me. Stay present. Elisha ran to commitment, not comfort. He also chose to give loss a chance. Give loss. A chance. Look at verse 5. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied. So be quiet. Three different times he understood that loss was getting ready to occur in his life. Get prepared. I understand in our lives today, sometimes we don't see loss before it's already happened and it's taken place. And sometimes it's difficult to walk through that. But me to you today, I highly want to encourage you that at that moment, we need to embrace, God, I don't know why this happened. I don't know why this occurred. But I can trust in you and understanding that in all things work together for good for the end who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I don't understand it, God, but I'm going to give this loss a chance. That's hard. I'm not Elisha. I wasn't in his sandals. But I can tell you this, that him losing his mentor and him having to process what he's getting ready to do was difficult for him. Based on his response three different, or twice, in these scripture verses. So be quiet. Me to you, I don't know what loss may be in your life. I don't know what God is saying. You need to lose this out of your life. But he's saying, will you give loss a chance? I've got a greater purpose behind it. That's hard. Agreed? Loss is hard. Looking at these verses, Romans 8, 28, and I just said it a moment ago, I'm going to say it again, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I want to pause there. I understand that. I understand loss is difficult, but God is saying, if you trust me, you lean upon me, then it's going to work for your good. It's going to work for your good. Elisha, understand, it's going to work for your good. I know you don't want Elijah to leave, but it's going to work for your good. Give loss a chance. Give my process a chance. Matthew 13, 45 and 46 says this, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. I think about missionaries every time in this story. We've got to hurry. 
Think about missionaries in this story. They sell everything, give everything away to do what God's called them to do because they consider that calling, that great pearl, more important than anything else. The loss that they're having to get rid of and having to move away from is not as significant, is not as great as what they see in front of them. And God was trying to show that to Elisha. And me to you today, I want to encourage you to understand that and embrace that in your life. Maybe getting rid of some things, maybe move forward in some things, is going to help you get closer to where God wants you to be as far as you're living your life for him. I believe deep down, Elisha understood the best thing that could happen to him and for God's kingdom was for Elijah to be taken. Write this down. After the goodbye, God is there. God is there. No matter what that loss is, no matter if like, I've got to get rid of it or it just happened and I had no control over it, whatever that loss is, give God a chance in that loss. Let him know that he's going to be there. He's going to be present. He's going to walk through you and help through in your life what needs to happen. Give loss a chance. The cool thing is, remember, taking Elijah was, not, uh, was God's plan, but leaving Elisha alone was not. Do you understand that? Now, I'm jumping ahead real quick. I've got to hurry. But understand that when Elijah left, God's anointing was now rested on Elisha. You get that? When you think, oh, I can't get rid of this. I can't let this go. I can't do this. And God's saying, if you just do that, I'm going to give you something that you need in your life that you didn't think you could ever have. And that's a double portion in Elisha's world. I'm jumping ahead. Sorry. But when he struck the water, what happened? When Elisha struck the water, it parted too. You know what that's significant for me is? God is with me. It wasn't my power. I couldn't do that in my own ability. But when I rested on God, when I stayed present, when I lived it, when I allowed the, the loss to be able to, to be embraced in my life, then I was able to do what God told me to do and live the life. In this moment, when we know God is for us, then we can be bold and we can ask. I want you to understand today that don't be afraid to ask God big questions. That question that Elisha is getting ready to ask in these verses was a huge question to ask. But he did it anyway. Because he saw what God could do when you're obedient to him. Look at verse number 9. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. Elijah was testing Elisha. God was testing Elisha. He was testing his resolve. Are you with me? That's some old southern term for me. Are you with me? You better be with me. I know, it's all like all together. It's all good. If you're from where I live, you understand how to talk. Are you with me? That's what God is really trying to say in these verses. What Elijah was trying to say, are you with me? Are you here? Because I'm getting ready to ask you a question. And if you want to respond, now's the time. In this room today, come on, look at me right quick. Look at me. In this room today, God is ready for you to ask the question you've been, ask, been wanting to ask him. And he's serious in this room to speak clarity and truth and life and direction for you if you'll be willing to ask the question. What are you asking for him today? What are you asking God? Something that's been churning on the inside. Something you don't want to talk to anybody else about. God is saying to you, ask me. Be bold. Ask me. I love this. Write this down. God knows. Just ask. God knows. Right here, what's in your brain, what's in your heart, he knows, just ask. But ask with the right motives. I love James 4, verses 2 and 3. This is what it reads. You desire, uh, but do not have. So you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. Scraping, running, trying to make it, trying to be better than the Joneses or whatever word you want to put there, trying to do this, trying to make it live, trying to go, 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 move, 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 move. And all along, God is trying to say, you're trying to go after something that I never wanted you to go after to begin with. Have you ever thought about asking me? But when we ask, this is what it says. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. When Elisha asked the question, it wasn't for his benefit. It was for, it was for God's kingdom. And Elisha understood that. 
I can say to you today very clearly and very, uh, very specific today, ask the right questions with the right motive, and you'll get the right answer. Not my words. Read it for James for yourself. God knows our hearts. Ask with the right direction. Elisha didn't ask for his own benefit. He asked because he knew God's purpose for his life. What do you need from God today? God wants to give you more today, so you need to, very last thing, fix your eyes on him. Look at verse number 10. This this is Elijah's reply to Elisha's question or request. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. I lived with a teacher many, many years, longer than probably she wants. We're still together. Hallelujah. She's shaking her head. She knows. Truth. It's true. But I've heard many different sayings of how she gets the class's attention. And one that I want to bring out today that I feel like God is saying to you today, one, two, three, eyes on me. God is saying that to you. He's saying that to me. One, two, three. Eyes on me. Elijah said, look, if you're looking at me and you're watching and you're following me, then you're going to be able to receive what I want to give you, what God wants you to give you. Again, I want to remind you, it wasn't Elijah that was going to give that to him. It was God that was going to give that to him. It was that double portion of God's anointing that was going to rest in his life. And in order for him to be able to receive that, he had to be watching up until the point to where Elijah wasn't there anymore. What am I saying? He had to be present. Mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, he had to be in the moment, ready to receive what God wanted to give him in his life today. Write this down. Look and get ready to receive. I love Hebrews 12 too. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Get this. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Just like Elijah, Elisha, just like Jesus, you and I have got to fix our eyes on him, on Jesus, in order to be able to get where God wants us to be able to go. And that's not going to happen if we're going another direction or we're not looking where we need to look. That's when the writer of Hebrews said, look, I want you to fix your eyes on Jesus. Look what he's done. Because Jesus did the very same thing. Do you understand that? Leaving heaven, coming to earth, living the life. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he did not want to follow through on what he knew God wanted him to do. And I can, if you ask the question, and maybe on the other side of heaven, we can ask Elisha, did you really want Elijah to leave? It's a 50-50 shot, he could say. I had been all right. Like, no, I didn't really want him to go. Because you asked the disciples when Jesus told them they were going to, he was going to leave. No, no, no. Peter exclaimed, no, 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 you can't leave. You can't do that. And what did he say? Get behind me, Satan. That's Jesus' words to his own disciples. Dude, I want you to understand something. I have fixed my eyes on what God wants me to do. And what you say and what's occurring around me is not going to keep me from doing what God's called me to do. Why? Because I'm not running to comfort. I understand loss is a good thing sometimes in my life, and I do embrace that. I need to ask the right questions because Jesus asked the question, God, not my will. If there's any way this cup can pass for me, read it for yourselves, then make it happen. But not what I want, what you want, God. That was Jesus' word to his father. And then he fixed his eyes on the prize because he said he counted it joy. Joy, what he did for you and for me today. And what he will continue to do throughout eternity, be our Lord and Savior. Really. For the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Today, God is asking you to be present so he can do what he wants to do in your life right now. Not tomorrow, right now. Come on, stand across this room. Lord, in this room today, 
I'm very thankful for your presence. I'm thankful for your love and your compassion. I'm thankful for your care. I'm thankful for your truth. Even though it may be difficult and sometimes hard to swallow in our lives, when we accept it, it's the best thing that can happen for us. At that moment and as we move forward. Lord, I'm going to repeat it one more time. Elisha understood that the best thing that could happen for God's kingdom is for Elijah to leave and for Elisha to continue to do what God had called him to do and his anointing rest upon him where he could do what needs to happen in order to remove the worship of false gods and idols out of the kingdom of Israel. Get them out of their country. And let them be the people that God had called them to be. Lord, in this room today, will you do that right now? With people that are asking specific questions and needing you to do specific things in their lives today? In their lives. At this moment. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 7 and 8 state, says this. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone, everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. Me to you today, God is saying, hey, I'm ready for you to ask. Ask with the right motives. If it's your will, God, will you do this? There may be some very specific things that you're saying, God, I need you to do this in my life today. So I'm not going to run to comfort. I'm going to accept that loss may occur during this process. I'm going to be bold and I'm going to continue to ask the question. I'm going to fix my eyes on you today. And from this day forward, I'm going to continue to do that. Because based on this story, out of your word and your truth, it's for my life today as well. And I receive it right now. Come on, your eyes are closed, you're focused on the Lord. I want to ask just a few questions. It's really just two questions today. The very one that you hear me most every Sunday ask, because I never want to walk away from it. You're in this building, first time, been here before. It makes no difference. That you're standing right where you're at right now and you know that your relationship with the Lord is not where it needs to be. We all have a relationship, hot or cold or lukewarm. And Jesus said, I'd rather be hot or cold and not lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. That's his words. So my prayer is that you'll get on the right side of where God wants you to be in your relationship with Jesus. If it's not on the right side of, of where it needs to be today, I want to pray for you. Come on, young man, young lady. Ma'am, sir, in this room today, if God is speaking to you, will you say yes to him and follow him to this day forward? Will you accept him as Savior? If that's you, raise your hand. I want to pray for you today. Come on. Be bold. Be honest with yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody else in this room today. Somebody else in this room. As soon as you put your hand down, you can put it, you can put it right back down. Somebody else in this room today. There's been one person that said yes to Jesus today. We're going to pray with them. We're going to pray for them today. Come on. Just for a few moments, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. God is speaking to you. He's saying, today, today. Come on, we do this just about every time that somebody gives their life to Christ. We're going to pray with them. Would you repeat this prayer with me? The person that raised their hand, repeat this prayer with me right now. Dear Jesus. Come on, say it out loud. Dear Jesus, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for caring about me. Today, I understand that I need you. Not just as a friend, but as my Savior. Today, I choose to follow you. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and be my Savior and my Lord. Lord, lead my life. Let me be the person you want me to be.
Jesus, thank you. Amen. Come on, when you give God praise today, come on, cross this place. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Come on, look at me right now. Here's the thing. We get, I know we're past time, and what's new for me? I apologize. I need help. There we go. But in this room today, just like I asked first service, you're here today, and you're saying, Pastor Steve, I got a question I want to talk to God about. And I want to ask him, and I need him to give me direction, an answer. I need help. I need whatever it may be. It doesn't make a difference. Here's the thing I want to challenge you with right now. This place up here is a place that you can connect to the Lord. You can connect to him right back in your seat. You can connect to him out in your car. But for right now, we want to gather around you. We want to pray with you today. We had folks move forward in first service that said, you know what, God? I'm not going to sit back in my seat of comfort. I'm going to move forward and let other people surround me and pray with me that God can do what needs to be done in my life and in my moment. So here's the thing. Our eyes are open. But if you need something from the Lord today, will you move? Will you move right now? I need it, Lord. I need an answer. I need direction. I need strength today. I'm just going to ask you, will you move right now? If God's speaking, just move. I can be the first one. Yep. It's okay. Just move. If God's speaking to your life and you need something from Him today, we're going to do that right now. I'm going to wait. I know it takes us a little time, and sometimes we're like, oh, I don't know if I should do this. God's saying, yes, move. Come on. There's other people in this room God's speaking to. You know you. And we know the Lord. And we're going to gather around these folks and we're going to pray with them. I'm going to ask, if God's speaking, move. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. Come on, let's go. It's okay. It's a good place. It's a safe place. Anyone else in this room today? Anyone else? God wants to pray with you. God wants to meet you right where you are. That's right. Come on. Just move. Just move. God's timing is always good. It's always right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's what I need. I need a lot of young, a lot of ladies out here. I need some men right here. I need you to gather around. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Gather around. Front, back, to side. This is about relationship. This is about friendship. This is about caring for people. Gosh, you don't really know how to pray. Yeah, you do. You know how to talk to people. Talk to God the same way. As they sing, and you're out here, would you stretch your hand out? If you want to pray, if you want to find a place for a few moments, just come. This place is open for you. As they sing, we're going to do this right now. We're going to believe God is going to meet whatever need may be in their life today. Do you believe that? We serve a big God. Come on, church. Let's pray together. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. You are faithful. Why should my heart be afraid? You are faithful. I know you're not going to change. You are faithful.
today as we continue to sing this song let's reach out to Jesus today because he is still in this place let's sing oh God my father come on sing it out let's do it oh God my father he's great how great great is your faithfulness oh God my father how great great is your faithfulness telling you to be present. Be present in Him. Be present in His Word. The people that stepped up today and said, hey, I need something from God. I need the, I need whatever it is. I need God to take care of that. Stay present. Be present in God's Word. Be present with Him. And he's going to take care of you. He'll never leave you. He will never forsake you. Amen. Amen. If you guys are at the front, you can make your way back to your seats. You guys can be seated wherever you are today. An awesome Sunday here at Journey Church. We are so thankful and grateful that you chose to be with us today. As we're wrapping up the service today, we just have a few things that we want to go over. Um... This wasn't on the list, but I'm just going to say it real quick. Next Sunday is family service. When there's a fifth Sunday out of the month, we usually try to incorporate our, our, our families and make it a family-type service. And so next week is that. We're going to bring the kids in, uh, and they're, gonna, they're actually going to start off our service with a worship song. Did you enjoy them? If you were part of our the Christmas celebration on the 19th, they sang a little bit. They Well, let's put it this way. They gave it their best effort. And they are so thankful and grateful that they had words to sing with. And that's going to happen again, hey, next Sunday at our celebration service. They're going to kick off service with a song, and we're, we're excited about that. But it's family services next week. Um, also happening 
here at Journey Church in the next few weeks is um, community groups signups are still going on. In that tent back there in that hub, there's a list uh, uh, of um, community groups that you can be a part of. If you have yet not signed up for anything, I want to encourage you, your family, to sign up for something. There is something for everyone, whether it's spiritually related, and there's some things that are not spiritually related. I can tell you right now, I say, I say this all the time, but my group is not spiritually related. My group is a family night, and we get together with young adults my age or older that have young kids, and you still have kids in the home, and we get together and we have fun. Our first event we're going to have is we're going to have a movie night where we're going to watch an appropriate movie, all right, a family movie. We're going to have popcorn. We're going to have all that stuff. It's going to be right here, but that's what we're doing. So there's things for everybody out there in that tent. You need to get involved. It is better together. We are better together, whether it's inside this church or outside this church. We need to build community. And you do that by signing up if you have not done so already. Um, February the 6th, our first Sunday in February, is Next Class. Next Class is an opportunity for you to get involved in Journey Church if you want to. We do this each and every month. If there is something a part of Journey Church that you want to be a part of, whether it's Kids Church, whether it's on the worship team, um, whether it's in the media booth, we need, by the way, we need camera people. So if you have a heart to not talk to anybody and just listen, Boom, there's your job, okay? All right, we, have, we need camera people. Uh, but if you have not gone through our next class, your first step is next class. It's after our second service um, on February the 6th. We will have lunch provided for you, and we will also have child care if you have children that you need. February the 27th, it's exciting. Uh, the last Sunday of that month is we get to celebrate three years of Journey Church. We do this every year, and we will do this until year five, and then we're going to skip a couple of years. But it's an exciting time that our lead pastor uh, just had a vision and a heart still here in northwest Arkansas to plant a church and look at it. We're three years in, and we're already in two services. Our children's ministry is growing. Our youth ministry is growing. Everything is happening, and we're just three years in. God is doing great things. We're going to celebrate that on February the 27th for our three-year celebration. And um, uh, lastly is if you're a guest and you signed up and you filled out that QR code, uh, you have a gift waiting for you on your way out. It has your name on it. Our guest service people will be waiting. If you have not done that, you still have time. Do that real quick. It will literally take you probably 30 seconds to do that if you scan that QR code, and they'll have something waiting for you right after service. Last and certainly not, list, uh, not least is giving. We appreciate your giving each and every week, and each and every time that you do. It does not go unnoticed. This is God's house. This is God's money. It goes to him. 10% goes back to him. And we appreciate that. Three ways you can give is on the buckets on your way out. You can text to give at journeynwa.church. Or you could not text. That's online. Sorry. Online is journeynwa.church. Text to give is 84321. We hope you have a blessed week blessings upon you. Let God use you this week. Be present in him and you are officially dismissed. God bless.